As is known, the Armenian air defense system before the 44-day Karabakh war mainly consisted of various Soviet-made anti-aircraft missile systems, including the previous version of the S-300 air defense system. During the Second Karabakh War, these systems failed to work, being disabled by the weapons of the Azerbaijani army, including attack drones and high-precision missiles. After the end of the war, Armenia began to rapidly restore its military potential, primarily updating the air defense system with more modern anti-aircraft missile systems and radars of non-Russian origin. However, the outdated Soviet anti-aircraft missile systems still remain in the arsenal of the Armenian army. According to military political portal AviaPro, Yerevan transferred these weapons to Ukraine. The portal reports that in recent weeks, a significant number of obsolete Soviet S-125, Pechora anti-aircraft missile systems and Tochka-U tactical missile systems have unexpectedly appeared in Ukraine, which can be explained by Armenia transferring its stockpiles to Kyiv. According to sources, Armenia, faced with internal and external challenges, may have decided to transfer its outdated air defense systems and missile systems to Ukraine in order to secure support and protection from Washington. In the context of geopolitical instability and threats from regional players, Yerevan may have sought ways to strengthen its security, including through closer ties with Western partners. The S-125 and Tochka U systems were considered irrelevant for modern armed forces, but in the current conflict in Ukraine, they may prove quite useful. It should be noted that Armenia has ordered a large batch of more modern Akash 1S anti-aircraft missile systems from India, produced on the basis of Soviet S-125 anti-aircraft missile systems. Armenia purchases not only anti-aircraft missile systems and radars from India, but also ballistic and tactical missiles of various ranges. Indian sources reported that Armenia is negotiating the purchase of Prele ballistic missiles with a range of 500 kilometers and Brahmos hypersonic tactical missiles with a range of 1,000 kilometers. In this context, the transfer of its Soviet Tochka-U tactical missiles to Ukraine is entirely possible. Russian ultra-patriots are panicking over the successful offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. They suspect that the Ukrainians are preparing a new unpleasant surprise for Russia. This opinion was expressed in particular by the security officer Igor Strelkov Girkin, who is in prison in the Russian Federation. His letter was published by his wife. In his letter, Strelkov wrote that he was closely monitoring the advancement of Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. I consider the strike by the Ukrainians in the Kursk region to be a distraction. We should expect a second, the main one in which they will use their remaining reserves and aviation, the security officer wrote. He is sure that the main offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces will be towards occupied Crimea. Kremlin propagandist Alexander Kotz made a similar statement on August the 16th. There is a feeling that the Ukrainians will strike somewhere else. We have not yet seen the main forces of the enemy, wrote the Z War correspondent. He noted that in their offensive in the Kursk region, the Ukrainian armed forces are practically not using heavy equipment, in particular Leopard tanks as well as American F-16 fighters. They are being saved for something else, Kotz wrote. He also believes that the main strike of the Ukrainian armed forces is planned specifically towards Crimea. He announced massive strikes by the Ukrainian armed forces on the Crimean bridge and isthmus on the administrative border with the peninsula. We should expect an attempt to cut our group in the Kherson region and Zaporozhye and take control of the land corridor, the propagandist wrote. Recall Russian President Vladimir Putin called the Kursk incursion Ukraine's attempt to halt Russia's offensive in Donbass, claiming that the Kremlin's push has only increased instead and that its troops were still advancing across the front line. The enemy seeks to improve its negotiating position in the future. Putin said at a meeting with top defense officials dismissing any prospects of peace talks. Experts said more time is needed for the effects of Ukraine's incursion into Russia and the strikes on Crimea to be felt on the battlefield. But the recent incursion and attacks on Crimea highlight how Kyiv, outnumbered and outgunned by Moscow's larger army, is keen to break the enemy's ability to stretch Ukrainian forces by attacking from three sides, north, east and south.